Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The words that we consider this day, dearly beloved, are taken from Psalm 98. God has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. So far, the word of the Lord. In the name of who is the sinless Lamb of God, beloved in Christ. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. What? Has our vacancy pastor lost his marbles? Does he know that that's a Christmas song? Well, friends, that hymn's scriptural basis is Psalm 98. And this psalm is the basis for today's Lenten sermon. The whole of verse 3 he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. This particular hymn that I just sang is always going to be associated with Christmas. But this hymn can really be sung if you look carefully at its words, throughout the entire church year. My singing it, however, proves a point. We memorize things that we like. We memorize things by repetition, whether it's that particular hymn or another favorite hymn or Luther's small catechism or music that the Livonia Civic Chorus we'll sing at our Sunday, May 19th, afternoon spring concert. My wife, son, and I sing in the Livonia Civic Chorus, which has more members that live in Westland and Canton and elsewhere than actually in Livonia. But our concert happens to be in the afternoon on the day of St. Matthew's Confirmation Sunday. And we have to memorize all our music. All of it has to be memorized. Not an easy task. But God had his people memorize things. He especially had them memorize parts of the Bible, such as Psalm 136, that psalm that we read before. There are 26 verses in Psalm 136, retracing some of salvation history. And the second half of every verse is, for his steadfast love endures forever. I'll bet you've got that memorized. For his steadfast love endures forever. Good. Sometimes in older translations you see, for his mercy endures forever. Both ways are fine. God wanted his chosen people to remember. But what were they remembering? They were remembering his steadfast love, his mercy. The Old Testament Hebrew word that's used is hesed. That's how we transliterate it into English, hesed, and pronounce it. But that's what it looks like. In Hebrew, you read from right to left, not left to right. And you read it from the back of the book to the front of the book. Everything might just uh, seem to be backwards, but that's how Hebrew is, is indeed read. And that's the famous Hebrew word hesed. It's a remarkable word, often translated as mercy or steadfast love or love itself and the remembrance that our Lord wanted the people to have goes both ways so today we affirm that God remembers his steadfast love so that the whole world sees his salvation 
causing us to remember. But what is it that we are remembering? Of course, we're remembering God's steadfast love. His grace has said in Hebrew is a rather remarkable word. It's really a kind of difficult to translate. The older translations have mercy. The newer ones usually render it steadfast love. But we hear it in Bible passages like Lamentations chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Oh, that brings great comfort to us, doesn't it? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. But what about us? While God remembers his steadfast love toward us in Christ, do we respond with steadfast love toward God and other people? Love is a very strong emotion. I've painfully, over the years, listened to couples in my study say, I don't love him anymore. I don't love her anymore. As we look into our own souls, we each can and must confess our own lovelessness at times toward others. But what does Jesus say about love? He affirmed, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. So love is more than just an emotion. It is also an action. Love sacrifices. At the cross, we see wondrous love. That hymnist Paul Gerhardt in the hymn that we sang just previously, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, he even personified love as a name of Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? Oh, wondrous love, what have you done? Over the past five weeks in Lent, I've had us experience the reading of the entire passion history of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a tradition that goes way back in Christianity and certainly was done at the time of the Reformation and even well into the 1950s and 60s and many of us still do it today. We have witnessed in that reading of the Passion history the things that happened to Jesus on that night of his betrayal, his institution of the Lord's Supper, his washing of the feet of the disciples, but then his suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, his suffering and mockery and torture and agony and bloody death by crucifixion, and all for the purpose of saving you and me from the perils of our sins. Friends, that's steadfast love. That's wondrous love. The New Testament word that comes closest to that word hesed in the Psalms, that word for steadfast love, is the New Testament word grace. Grace is from God. Grace is undeserved love. It endures forever. It is by grace you and I are saved through faith, through faith in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God that he remembers his steadfast love so that the whole earth sees his salvation, just as noted in that Christmas hymn. The whole earth includes all 7.6 plus billion people, each an individual, yet God loves each one, including you, including you and me. He also loves to the end of our lives. On Monday, a woman who had attended the auction and whose mother I had visited last month, but then again just a couple days ago, she gave me a call, and her mother was struggling. And she asked me what to do. 
I encouraged her to keep her mother focused on Jesus Christ, to stay focused on his cross, his redeeming love, and the crown of eternal life that awaits her in heaven through faith in him, who is the sinless lamb of God, Christ crucified and risen. And that is the same idea when we sing stanza six of the hymn, Abide With Me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life and death, O Lord, abide with me. God remembers his steadfast love as we are remembering his steadfast love right now. May we also see his salvation. May we see others around us who need to hear the gospel of life and peace in God's Son, our Savior. Hesed, that Hebrew word, may be a bit hard to translate, but we know steadfast love. We know wondrous love when we see it in Christ. What we have a hard time putting into words, God puts in your heart and mind Thanks be to him for his love so that we and all people see his salvation in the world's one and only redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen.